So today I want to tell you a summary of everything we know so far for the 2021 new MacBook Pro 16 inch release date and price what is looking to be shown at the WWDC event this year. So WWDC is a matter of days away and there is a possibility that we might be seeing the new MacBook Pro 16 inch at this event. Over the last couple of months, we've seen lots of leaks about the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now there was a very new piece of news that mini LED displays, also known as the Rest and Liquid XDR display, has been delayed for the next MacBooks. The same with this new leak here from Digitimes, that they believe the new MacBook Pros are to come at the end of 2021 or even in early 2022. However, it is a possibility this is referring to the next generation of MacBooks, as other leaks like this one from John Prozer recently believes that there is some secret coding in the WWDC picture and it's going to be announced at WWDC. Then there is another leak from Morgan Stanley who is saying that the MacBook Pros are coming this summer with them being announced at WWDC. The same with Daniel Ives who believes the same, where he's seen a note being sent to investors where it states that there will be a few surprises including the new MacBook Pros. When we get leaks like this and lots of other leaks that are close together, it can only mean one thing from Apple, that the new product is close to release. A lot of leaks are pointing to this summer and if this is the case, we believe the release of the new MacBook Pro M1X will be in July time. And let me explain why. With the recent launch of the M1 chipset in the new iMac and the iPad Pro since the spring loaded event, we believe this is the end of Apple's M1 chipset journey. The next logical course is to upgrade the Macs that are in the next tier up with either an M1X or an M2 chipset inside it. The reason why I'm saying M1X and M2 is something I will get onto in a mo. Now we're expecting this new MacBook Pro this summer. And according to a new leak, the new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro models will come with an improved iteration of the M1 chip and it will be coming this summer according to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman. Again, we'll get onto the details about the CPU and GPU and all the info that it talks about here in this leak. However, we've had another leak again from Mac Rumors here and it's shared that the next line of chipsets have already started mass production and they believe this will be called M2. Normally when a leak says that the chip has gone into mass production, it means an Apple product is not far away. This leak here references that the chip should be ready for around July time for shipping. Apple's release history within the last say 9 months has shown that they like to show their new products at an event then launch the product about 3 to 4 weeks later. Just take a look at the Apple Spring Loaded event at the end of April time, with pre-orders starting around 10 days later for the iPad Pro, iMac M1 and the new 4K Apple TV with the Siri remote. Apple also turned around and said they'll begin shipping 3 weeks later, what they did. With some of the iPhone 13 models and the iPad Air, we had something similar happen where they were released about 3 or 4 weeks later as well. So we can see a bit of a pattern emerging here. The next event is going to be WWDC 2021 and that event is going to start on June the 7th. And with all these leaks popping up and everyone saying that the new Macs are coming in the summer or July time, we expect Apple to show the new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros at this WWDC event with pre-orders starting around 10 days later and again we believe the release or shipping will start about 3 to 4 weeks later that steps into around July time. With this pattern you can see how this can match these latest leaks I just spoke about. With this in mind, we believe these new MacBooks will be available in our hands probably between July 2nd to July 16th. Now let's talk more about the actual chipset before talking about the price. So the new chipset to go inside the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro might either be the M1X or the M2. Personally, I believe that the next generation of MacBooks will get the M2, like the new colourful MacBook Air renders we've seen and the leaks we've seen here from Mark Gurman again saying that the new MacBook Air will have M2. In fact, if you want more details about the new MacBook Air that's going to possibly come out the end of this year, check out my other video on my channel at the same time. But to the point, myself and many others believe that the chipset is most likely going to be called the M1X chipset in the Pro models that we're going to see this summer. 
Leakers have in the past have got their facts wrong with names for devices. An example was like the iPad Pro 2021 model. A lot of us thought it would get an A14X chipset inside it, but it got M1 instead. Also last year, we actually believed the MacBook Air and the 13-inch MacBook Pro was actually going to get that same A14X chipset inside it, but you guessed it, it was the M1, and yet there was no leaks about this name, just that the chipset had more cores than A14, and it was going to be put inside the new MacBooks, and because of those additional cores, and because of previous history with other Apple devices, we believed it was going to be called the A14X. However, even though I'm fairly confident it will be called M1X for these new MacBook Pros that will be coming out this summer, I'm open-minded it could also be called the M2 or even another name. However, to keep it simple for now, we'll refer to the chipset as M1X. For specs of that new M1X chipset, with that leak from Mark Gurman, the new chip is said to include a 10-core CPU with 8 high-performance cores and 2 energy efficiency cores with 16-core and 32-core GPU options. So starting with that 10-core CPU, this is a bit of a change in how we imagine how the M1X would look like. We believed it would actually be a 12-core CPU, but to be honest, it's not all doom and gloom. The way M1X is set up, like German says, is we will have 8 times performance cores. If you know anything about M1, the normal M1 only has 4 performance cores, so this is double the amount. It's also believed that these cores will be operating at the same clock speed as the 4 performance cores as inside M1. So we're looking at around about a 50% increase in performance operation over multi-core. Now, where we do lose some cores is the efficiency cores. Now, M1 has four of these and M1X will only have two. However, the reason to drop two of these cores and M1 to have four is you've got to remember that M1 was put inside lower spec max. These are the max that are argued that the general consumer would buy and not really use for high-end tasks regularly. What I mean by this is say around a year or two ago, if you are a pro photo or video creator for example, you would look more towards a higher spec MacBook Pro than say the MacBook Air or the lower spec MacBook Pro. If you do buy an M1X, and yes if you are a pro photo or video editor, you can still scan the web, check emails for example with those two efficiency cores and it will be absolutely fine. However, you would want a Mac with higher specs for doing those pro tasks and this is exactly why the M1X has been set up this way with the two efficiency cores and eight performance cores. The other reason why there's 10 cores over 12 is also related to battery life and thermals. The more cores that are inside the MacBook, the more the chipset would drain on the battery. Now we're expecting good sized batteries inside the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, so battery life with these 4 extra performance cores should still be good. However, the other side of the coin is also thermals and heat. With having saying 12 cores if M1X was built like this, the MacBook would be a lot hotter than saying having 10 cores. Also the fact that Apple need to squeeze all its cores including the newer engine and the GPU cores within that same chip. Talk about GPU cores, the leak again talks about a 16 core or 32 core GPU options. Very similar to the M1, we believe we'll be either getting two times or four times the same amount of cores that you get inside the M1. The reason why I say these times amount is because M1 has eight GPU cores inside it. It is unlikely that the single GPU core speed will be any faster than what you get in M1 as well, again due to thermals and battery life. However, using machine learning and optimised apps for the M1X, apps like Final Cut Pro for example will utilise these cores how it sees fit. With this combined with machine learning, we could see an increase between 50% to even 200% faster than what we get on M1, what is just truly amazing. Right now, we do not know how this GPU change will compare to, say, an AMD dedicated graphics inside like the current 16-inch MacBook Pro. But if we know Apple, it will be around the same or faster, but have machine learning capabilities, and that makes a lot of difference. 
Compared to the Intel higher spec current 13 inch MacBook Pro, this graphics will just wipe the floor in performance in the new 14 inch model. Now the last item to talk about with M1X is about the RAM. Again, according to that leak from German, we're expecting to get a choice of up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. We're likely to see a choice of 16, 32 or 64 gigabytes. Now with so many cores inside the M1X, it's also logical for the RAM to start at 16 gigabytes. Now, one thing to note is that if you want the 64 gigabyte RAM, you are likely to receive the 32 core GPU version of the M1X chipset. Or even if you want the 32 core GPU, then it's the same again. It's most likely you'll have to pick one with 64 gigabytes of RAM inside it. The main reason behind this is that the GPU share the RAM with the CPU. So if you use an app that utilizes the CPU cores and the GPU cores all at the same time, then you can imagine a lot of RAM is needed there to be shared around. So let's move on to the design and specs and then price. So the leak tells us that a redesigned MacBook Pro could see Apple bring back the much loved MagSafe charger and also ditch the controversial touch bar at the same time. The news comes from a long time Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo via MacRumors who has been super accurate with leaks and collaborated by Bloomberg's Mark Gurman's tweets shown here as well. Some of these concepts that I'm showing to you is based on these design changes. All these changes are big news and not just because the MacBook Pro's design has stayed the same since the launch of the Touch Bar in 2016, but MagSafe for example was one of the MacBook's better selling points, but it vanished when Apple switched over to USB-C ports on the new type of MacBooks that we have right now. We did get a new MagSafe with the iPhone 12 last year, but it was a very different technology relying on QI wireless charging rather than the breakaway power cables of the old MacBooks that use a magnet and four pins to charge the actual device. The only question is how different the MacBook's MagSafe will be compared to the iPhone 12's version. According to German, it will be similar to the pill-shaped design of the old MagSafe connectors and will connect to the MacBook's charging port. But there are other changes as well. According to Quo, we're going to lose the touch bar and Apple are going to return back to a physical keyboard tray at the top. To me, I do and I don't like the touch bar. For using a 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro, what I'm using right now, I could go back to physical buttons if I had to. However, one feature I do like, and that is for example, predictive text like an iPhone above the actual keyboard. And I admit, I would actually probably miss this feature. The other ports that Quo talks about as well is that he believes there will be a wider range of ports to reduce the number of need of dongles to connect into your MacBook Pro. The thing is though, don't get overexcited that loads more ports are going to return back to the MacBook Pro just like the last version were ended in 2015. What we mean by extra ports, minus that kind of MagSafe charger like I just said, is that we're probably going to see the return of a HDMI port on one side. Also on the other side, the well-missed SD card port, because we do really, really miss that kind of port. At the same time as well, I still believe that we're probably going to get four ports um, of USB-C on each side. And each of those four ports are most likely to be Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4, just like we get right now inside the M1 Max. For price wise we expect the current bottom end of the 16 inch i7 MacBook Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM and standard graphics to be the base price for the new M1X MacBook Pro 16 inch. So this comes in currently at 2399 US dollars. So are you excited about the new silicon 16 inch MacBook Pro? And will you be getting one soon after launch or will you get another M1 MacBook? Let me know what model you plan to buy. Well guys that is the latest and greatest info we have on the 16 inch MacBook Pro silicon line at this stage. If we get any more news of course we will share it with you. Don't forget if you have liked this video to press the like button and of course to hear the latest gaming news, tech news, reviews and comparisons please do hit that subscribe button followed by the bell. Until next time guys. See ya.